Yes, sir. Yes, 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 friends. Listen. Yes. All right, friends. So, listen. Listen, listen. Let's start a new chapter. Let's start our revision with PGBP, the most important things under PGBP. Let's finish off. Okay. So, Adi hmm? Pulia. All right. So, we'll start with the PGBP right now. So, friends, listen. Whenever we are discussing PGBP, the first thing that you should know how to compute an income under PGBP, okay? So, we will start with the computational format in PGBP. So, please listen. How to compute an income under PGBP? In examination, if there is a question in relation to the PGBP, then what are the things? Where should you start? That is the first thing that we are saying. So, shh, keep quiet and listen. Yeah, so the first thing, shh, keep quiet and listen. So the first thing that you should know is the charging section under PGBP or we can say the income under PGBP. Section 28 is the income from business or profession. This is the first thing that you should know. Which will are the main incomes that are coming under PGBP? Then, from section 30 to 37, it is deductions. It is deductions from the taxable income. So, section 30 to 37 is all about what, friends? Deductions. Then, after this, there are certain things that is called as disallowances. Disallowances under section 40 and 40A. Two set of disallowances we have. What is disallowance? What is disallowance? Expenses you have incurred but not allowed as deduction. You have incurred some expenses in some nature or in certain circumstances. It is not allowed as deduction. That is called as what? Disallowances. Thereafter, after the disallowance, there is a restriction that is called as, or we can say one more disallowance. I mean, 40 and 40, we've completed that. And there is other administrative sections. Other administrative sections. Under that, we will be discussing section 43B only. Okay. Because I'm not covering 44A, A, A, B, A, D, A, D, A, A, E, etc. Presumptive taxation, books of accounts then uh, tax audit and all I am not covering because they are administrative sections. So in the administrative section, we will be covering only 43B. And what is 43B? Certain expenses are allowed as a deduction on actual payment basis. That is said to be 43B that I will be covering. So these are the things that we are about to discuss in section, I mean in this chapter, PGBP. But this will take a lot of time, okay? Because compared to salary, uh, we have to focus more on PGBP because every attempt in the history of ICI, there will be one question, both in inter as well as in final. Both in inter and final, there will be one question from PGBP. Without that, there is no attempt at all in the history of our CA examination. Both inter and final, there will be one question. Or I can say that question will be not exclusively from PGBP. It will be a computation of total income question, but 90% of the adjustment will be from this particular chapter. So we will start with the section 28. That means the income chargeable under PGBP. So section 28, can you read the heading? Income chargeable under PGBP. First of all, you tell me what you mean by business. I'm doing some trade, commerce or a manufacture and that activity is recurring. And that activity is recurring. Again and again and again, I'm doing that and generating income. That will become as my business activity. 
So that recurrence is an important factor to determine whether an income is taxable under PGBP or not. Are you with me? Second one, what do you mean by professional income? Out of my skill, experience, expertise, knowledge, etc. If I am able to generate some income, that income is said to be what? Professional income. It is not necessary that I should have a degree certificate from a recognized university. It is not necessary. Say I am an artist, an actor. Whether I have studied in some film institute or not, if I am able to generate income out of my acting, then definitely uh, that income will be professional income. Are you with me? Say I am a painter. Okay, I'm a painter, natural talent. Okay, I haven't uh, studied any painting or drawing anything from anywhere. But if I'm getting some income, that income will be under PGBP, professional income. Because it is not necessary that you should have a degree certificate to earn a professional income. From your experience, expertise, knowledge, etc. If you're able to generate some income, then definitely that can be called as a professional income. Are you with me? Are you with me? So this is what is called as the PGPP, that is professional or business income. So the first item under here is, can you read the first item? Income arising to any person by way of profits and gains from business or profession or vocation. That means any activity similar to profession. Say I am a personality developer. I am doing the personality development or a motivator or a skill trainer. Always all the incomes will come under PGPP. Nowadays these kinds of Activities are there. Skill, trainer, skill trainers, uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, motivational speakers, they are also generating income. And most of the corporates are calling them because they want to uh, make people more oriented. Okay, come again. Ah, for the communication skill also, uh, mostly they used to hire certain people and uh, they will bring and uh, they will try to boost the confidence of the listeners. Yeah, so this is what happens right now. And for students also, a kind of an orientation classes by um, ICA and it is called as what right now MCT no orientation only but there is something called MCT that's only in final right now that is GMCS okay GMCS is still there in the new syllabus MCS it is oh MCS ah yeah so at our time it was orientation is there ITT was there, GMCS was there. That's it, three programs. Right now, ITT, Advanced ITT. Then GMCS, MCS maybe. Then uh, Orientation, Advanced Orientation. No. It's Bora. ITT Bor. ITT Bor, okay. Then tell the, write a letter to the institute. To show Indian 2 in ITT. Okay. Then it will be even more boring. <laughs> All right. So, so, yeah. So, coming back to the point, friends. Coming back to the point. Income arising to a person by way of profits and gains from business or profession or any vocation will be taxable under PGBP. Now, friends, now, friends, listen. Along with this, there are certain other items also have to be taxed under PGBP. Are you with me? Apart from your direct business or professional income, there should be some other items also that should be mandatorily taxed under PGBP. And I have selected a few items. Number one, any interest, salary, bonus, commission or remuneration due to or received by a partner of a partnership firm. The PM firm means partnership firm. Listen, I am a partner of a partnership firm. I'm what? A partner of a partnership firm. I'm getting interest on capital. I'm getting what? Interest on capital. Or I'm getting remuneration. Say I'm a working partner, I'm getting remuneration. You tell me, is that remuneration taxable under salary? No, that remuneration is not taxable under salary. Rather, you have to tax it under PGBP. Are you with me? Are you with me? Similarly, if I'm getting interest on loan from a partnership firm, that interest on loan also have to be taxed under PGBP in the hands of partner. Because for the partner, both are income. For the partnership firm, both are expense. For the partnership firm, both are expense. And for the partner, both are income. Are you with me? Now, since we have discussed this point, let me straight away jump into a disillavance. Okay, let me straight away jump into a disillavance and come back. 40B. You might have studied that 40B in your regular classes. We will complete 40B and we will come back. Okay, so listen. Because it has a connection. It has a connection. 
So if I explain it right now, you will understand it in a better manner. So straight away, jump into page number 29. Straight away, jump into page number 29 of our revision material. In page number 29, this is actually very important. I think in, uh, in, 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 in May 23, if I'm not wrong, they have asked the question, uh, compute the total income of a partner. Compute the total income of a partner. And they have adjusted uh, the thing which I'm about to discuss right now. Are you all with me? So listen, listen. Section 40B, what they are saying is, it's a ceiling limit on interest on capital and remuneration to the partners. So I'll draw a chart over here. So I want all of you to be super attentive here. Okay. So this is ch this chart is a combined interpretation of section 40B, section 28 and section 10 subsection 2A. Three things we are about to discuss right now. So please listen. So say this chart contains section 28 then section 40B and section 10-2A. Listen, say you are a partnership firm. You are what? A partnership firm. And there is a partner. There is a partner. Now listen, say this partnership firm is paying interest on capital to that particular partner or they are paying a remuneration to working partner. Remuneration to working partner. So listen, there is a partnership firm PF and there are certain partners and to the partners, this partnership firm is paying what? Interest on capital and remuneration to the working partners. Now you tell me, these two expenses or those, these two items are actually expenses for the partnership firm. These two items are actually expenses for the partnership firm. The partnership firm is actually doing some business and they are making some profits out of it. From that profit, they will, they can claim this interest on capital as well as the remuneration to partners as what? A deduction, but subjected to certain ceiling limits. That's what we are about to discuss right now. Are you with me? Are you with me? Now let's understand what is the ceiling limit. That means deduction for interest and remuneration is subjected to is subjected to section 40B. Deduction for interest and remuneration is actually subjected to section 40B. Now listen friends, listen. What is the deduction? That's what we are about to discuss right now. Let's complete the deduction and come back to the chart. Okay. Let's uh, complete 40B, then 28 and 10 to A. Then we will complete the chart as well. So going back to section 40B, can you read the first one, first box under that? Interest on capital to partners. What is interest on capital? Every partner will infuse money to that partnership firm as what? Capital. And the partnership firm has to pay interest to that particular partner. It's not mandatory, okay? It's, it's, it's the wish of partnership firm. If they are paying interest on capital, then that is an expense for the partnership firm. And the partnership firm can claim that interest as a deduction. But there is a ceiling limit. And can you tell me how much is the ceiling limit? Maximum deduction shall be 12% on the capital. The firm can claim a deduction of how much? Only 12% on the capital. Are you with me? Are you with me? What if, what if the firm is paying 10% interest on capital? Then what will happen? Can they claim 12% as deduction? No. Maximum is 12. That is always subjected to the actual interest. If the firm is paying an interest of 10% on the capital, then they can claim only that 10% as deduction. If the firm is paying 14% as interest, then they can only claim 12% as capital, sorry, 12% as deduction. So listen, we'll create an example. Say the capital, forget about remuneration, okay? Forget about remuneration for the time being. Say the capital invested by the partner is say 10 lakh. 10 lakh is the capital invested by the partner. Ten lakh is the capital invested by the partner. And the partnership firm used to give interest at 14 percentage. 
interest at what rate friends 14 percentage so can you tell me how much will be the interest how much will be the interest on capital paid by the partnership firm to the partner actual interest actual interest will be 1 lakh 40 thousand this is the actual interest are you with me but partnership firm can claim only how much 12 percentage that is 1 lakh 20 thousand so maximum deduction under section 40 b will be at 12 percentage on the capital that is 1 lakh 20 thousand so how much is the disallowance 20 thousand is the disallowance for partnership firm are you with me are you with me so when you compute the total income of a partnership firm and the partnership firm is paying an interest which is more than 12 percentage to the partner on the uh, capital then maximum deduction shall be how much only 12 percentage are you all with me now there is a thing what is the actual money paid by the partnership firm to the partner they paid actually 1 lakh 40 but in the books of accounts partnership firm can claim only 12 percentage as deduction then what will happen to the 20,000 rupees what will happen to the 20,000 rupees in the hands of partnership firm it will add back to the profits yes or no but this 20,000 money is with the partner right now because they paid 1 lakh 40 only 1 lakh 20 is deductible so that 20,000 rupees is a is with the partner now you need to understand one thing the partner has received how much 1 lakh 40 thousand received in total the partner has received how much 1 lakh 40 thousand rupees as interest in total are you all with me out of this 1 lakh 40 only 1 lakh 20 have to be treated as interest on capital only 1 lakh 20 will be treated as interest on capital and taxable under section 28 are you with me only 1 lakh 20 thousand shall be interest on capital and that 1 lakh 20 only will be taxable under section 28 so my question is what will happen to the 20 thousand what will be happened to the 20 thousand it is added back with the profits of the partnership firm no doubt but right now the 20 thousand money is with the partner partner is not required to pay back that to the partnership firm what will happen to the 20,000? That 20,000 will be treated as a share of profit given by the partnership firm to the partner. It is not interest, it is because income tax department only added back the 20,000 to the profits. But that 20,000 is now with the partner. So that 20 will be treated as what? Share of profit distributed by the partnership firm to the partner. Are you with me? To be treated as share of profit distributed by partnership firm to partner now there is an interesting thing under section 10 to a the share of profit is fully exempted is exempted in the hands of partner Share of profits are fully exempted in the hands of partner. Are you all with me? Is that point clear? So very simple friends. See, imagine a situation. Income tax department only told that, told that only 1 lakh 20 out of 140, only 1 lakh 20 is the deductible interest. Yes or no? They told this to the partnership firm. But the partnership firm have given 1 lakh 40 to the partner. So out of that 1 lakh 40, only 1 lakh 20 will become what? Interest on capital received by the partner. The rest 20,000 have to be treated as share of profit distributed by the partnership firm to the partner. Even though it is called as interest, that will be treated as share of profit received by the partner. And that 20 shall be fully exempted in the hands of the partner. This has been tested in I think May 23 if I am not wrong. Okay, May 23 if I am not wrong, this has been tested. Are you all with me? Is that point clear? Online friends, please respond. Are you all here?
So when we say interest on capital taxable under section 28, one thing you should understand, the same amount should be deductible in the hands of the partnership firm as well. Only those amount which is deductible in the hands of partnership firm will be treated as taxable income in the hands of partner. Are you all with me? Are you with me? It should be two way. It should be two way. You have to go to there and you have to come back. It is like that. It should be always a two way. So what they are saying is if the partnership firm is, they can deduct that interest, that deducted amount will be taxable in the hands of the partner. The rest will be treated as share of profit distribution. I hope it is clear. Moving on. Moving on. Interest on partner's hand. Okay. That's what I've written. Interest on partner's hand, 120. The rest 20,000 shall be exempted. Okay. Not assume. Question in May 23. Right now, if I explain that question, you will run away. Because first of all, we have to complete the five heads. That question is computation of total income question. Okay. One of the adjustment is this. I think I have uh, taken that question. I'm not sure whether I have taken that question. Uh, Ah, yes, I think this is the one, May 20, May 22, sorry, it's May 22, 14 mark question. Uh, this is the one, interest received amounting to 2 lakh and all, this is there, but first let us compute the, let's complete the five heads, then we will discuss this question, okay. It is there, 14 mark question, May 22, I've selected this question, okay. Yeah, so, yes. I hope you understood this. So have you written this? I mean, have you take a copy of this? And one interesting factor is it has an amendment this time. In this budget, this budget, the budget announced today, it has been amended. Uh, rates have been changed. That don't you don't worry. You for you it's not applicable. Okay. Just just said out of that uh, to share that information, that's it. Okay. So either take a picture and share it to the respective group or that's better rather than wasting time on copying just click a picture then what will happen to the old dream and default dream means what we haven't discussed anything related to default dream okay so please wait sir anyone have the question which is sir show in the don't worry don't worry that question is there in your question sheet okay that I'll make you solve when you compute the total income chapter. Right? Not right now. Yeah. So friends, listen. Listen. Shh. Likewise, there is one more thing. There is one more thing that they are saying. Can you read the next heading? Deduction on remuneration to the working partner working partner so let's let's understand no no i meant the question pdf oh you didn't get the question pdf yet i think it is there in the group okay it is can you can someone pin that in the group pin that uh, only admin can pin different there are two groups actually one for online and one for face to face okay I don't have any access to any of the groups, okay? So, yeah. So, somebody pinned that particular, uh, what do you say, question sheet in the meeting, sorry, not meeting group, okay? Yeah. So, coming back to the point, friends, listen. Shh. Deduction on remuneration to working partner. What do you mean by remuneration to working partner? Keep quiet. What do you mean by remuneration to working partner? Come again. Uh, say for example, if you are a working partner and the company is paying you remuneration, then that not company, the partnership firm is paying you remuneration, then the partnership firm can claim that remuneration paid to a partner as a deduction. The partnership firm can claim remuneration paid to the partner as a deduction provided that partner should be a working partner. There are different types of partner in a partnership firm. Sleeping partner, nominal partner, minor as a partner, partner by estoppel or holding out and working partner. Only working partner salary paid by the firm to the partner shall be deductible. The rest you cannot deduct. Are you with me? Are you with me? So 
there is a ceiling limit for that particular reduction and let's understand what exactly is the ceiling limit so can you read the heading book profit and quantum of deduction that simply means book profit based on a percentage of book profit you have to compute that particular ceiling limit what is book profit i'll tell you later so please 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 be attentive so can you read the first limit on the first 3 lakh of book profit or in the case of loss the quantum of deduction shall be either 1 lakh 50 thousand or 90 percentage of the book profit whichever is higher are you with me are you with me and on the balance book profit how much is the limit 60 percentage of the book profit so i'll give you an example too for a better understanding of this provision say a partnership firm's book profit is 10 lakhs a partnership firm's book profit is say 10 lakhs what is book profit i'll tell you later okay how do you compute the ceiling limit for remuneration under section 40b out of this 10 first you take 3 lakh book profit then how much is the maximum either rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand standard figure or 90 percentage of 3 lakh whichever is higher how much is 90 percentage of 3 lakh 2 lakh 70 so you have to pick the 2 lakh 70 on the balance book profit how much is the balance book profit 7 lakh because it was total 10 and the balance will be 7 7 lakh into 60 percentage and how much is 60 percentage 4 lakh 20 thousand so all together how much is the maximum remuneration 6 lakh 90 thousand is the maximum remuneration payable by the partnership firm this is always subjected to actuals if the actual remuneration paid by a firm to a partner is 5 you will only get deduction for 5 this is not to one partner this is not in a month this is to all partners aggregate in a year a partnership firm shall not pay more than 4 lakh 90 um, not more than 4 lakh 90 are you all here are you all here now you tell me what if the partnership firm is paying 7 lakh as a remuneration to a partner maximum limit is 70 there is only working one working partner in a partnership firm the other partners are say sleeping and the partnership firm is paying 7 lakh as remuneration then the partnership firm will get a deduction only for 690 yes or no but the partner got 7 what will happen to the 10 that 10 again will be treated as share of profit that will be disallowed in the hands of partnership firm but that will be treated as share of profit in the hands of partner that working partner and it will be fully exempted and what will happen to the 6 lakh 90 that will be taxable in the hands of partner under section 28 even though it is remuneration since there is no employer employee relationship between a partner and a partnership firm this remuneration have to be taxed under section 28 have you understood the connection between 28 40b and 10 subsection 2a have you understood so three sections it's in one league 40b that is deduction for the partnership firm section 28 that deducted amount will become income in the hands of partner and 10 to a apart from that whatever given by the partnership firm to the partner shall be fully exempted these three are under three uh, what do you say places these three are under three places you should identify these kinds of things are you with me they will mix it up they will definitely mix it up such things in exam light are the confuser there is nothing okay you remember this example that's it so we will i'll make you understand don't worry another say crystal clear okay i am getting confused right now sir we have three working partners in a firm each partner get five lakh per annum in this case uh what is this okay in this case also the limit is 6.9 yes 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 all together 6.9 in between the partners that you adjust okay in between the partners you adjust total 15 lakh you paid only 6.9 you will get a deduction the rest have to be treated as share of profit that proportionately you can claim 6.9 divided by 3 to each partner will be the uh, remuneration received by each partner yes are you all with me 
now friends now friends there is one interesting thing that is what is book profit let's understand what is book profit so book profit very simple book profit so can you read the definition for book profit book profit simply means current year profits as per pgbp before adjusting remuneration and brought forward business loss very simple to compute book profit you consider everything from 28 to 44c all the expenses deductions all the income everything under pgbp you adjust except brought forward business loss what is brought forward business loss last year's business loss that is current year income only you have to consider as book profit don't adjust remuneration why that's what we are about to compute are you with me except remuneration and last year's business loss you adjust everything under pgbp you will get one figure that figure is said to be what book profit on that figures uh, percentage you have to compute the ceiling limit and that is the deductible expenditure under 40 B. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, Everything under PGBP includes interest. Okay, interest is also under 40B. Everything under PGBP includes what? Interest on capital as well. Have you understood what I said? If not, don't worry, I'll make you solve a small question to get a better clarity over this provision. So, uh, I'll make you solve a small question, okay? Oh, that question is actually in two pages. Yeah, but I hope you can manage. It's actually in two pages, but just go through this question number 11 and give me the answer. Just go through this question number 11 and give me the answer. Share of profit is disallowed to the firm and the same is exempted to the working partner, yes. 690 is taxable to the partner under PGVP. Yes. It's taxable to the partner. And 690 is deductible to the partnership firm. Yes, that's right. Yes, Maunika, you're right. Ragul, don't worry. Solve this question. You will understand the concept, okay? Ragul, you solve this question, you will get the concept. Don't worry.
So shall we solve it together? Listen. <clears throat> Keep quiet and listen. Rao and Jain, a partnership firm consisting of two partners, reports a net profit of 7 lakh before deduction of the following items. So, their partnership firm have already computed a net profit. Okay, how much is a net profit computed? Seven lakhs. And this net profit is before adjusting the following items. What is item number one? Salary of 20,000 each per month payable to working partner of the firm as authorized by the deed of partnership. So they paid some salary. Don't deduct that. Why? They paid some salary to some working partners. Don't deduct that. Why? Because we need to compute the book profit and check whether that amount paid is within the ceiling limit. Yes or no? Yes or no? Not already deducted. Reports a net profit before a deduction of the following items. That's what they are saying. Okay. Now, what is item number two? Depreciation on plant and machinery under section 32. Computed 1,50,000. So you tell me what to do. What to do? That is depreciation. Depreciation is an allowable deduction. Tomorrow we will study about depreciation section 32. So depreciation section 32 is definitely a deductible expenditure. How much is that? 1,50,000 you can claim as a deduction. Now, how about the next one? Interest on capital 15 percentage per annum as per the deed of partnership. The amount of capital eligible for interest is 5 lakh. So they have actually paid 5 lakh into 15 percentage as interest. And how much will be the amount? 75,000. But you cannot claim that's the entire 75 paid as a deduction. Why? Only 12 percentage is allowed as deduction. That means how much 12 percent? 60,000. So 60,000 is only allowed as deduction for the partnership firm. So you have to take that 60,000 interest on capital. We are computing the total income of partnership firm. Okay. So only 60,000 is allowed as deduction. Now you tell me what is the next one? This is it. Compute the book profit of the firm under 40B of Income Tax Act 1961. So can you help me? How much is the book profit? Book profit. Book profit means you adjust everything under PGVP, but don't adjust the remuneration as well as don't adjust broad forward business loss. That's what we have learned. Are you with me? So we have adjusted everything apart from remuneration. And there is no broad forward business loss in this question. So can you help me with the figure? How much is the book profit? 4,90,000 is the book profit. Are you with me? Now, if 4,90,000 is the book profit, how do you compute the ceiling limit? Ceiling limit. So, what to do? Ceiling limit, that what they are saying is, out of 4,90,000, you take 3 lakh first into 90 percentage or rupees 1,50,000, whichever is higher. 3,90 percentage will be the higher here. How much is that? 2,70,000. How much is the balance? 1,90,000. Out of 4,90,000, lakh we have taken the balance is 1,90,000 into 60 percentage. And can you help me with the math? 1,14,000. So how much will be the total? You can claim up to 384. Can you tell me how much is the actual, actual um, uh, uh, amount paid? Actual amount paid is, let's understand, they are saying 20,000. 20,000 per month into two working partners into 12 months. And how much is actual? 4 lakh? 80,000. But you can claim only 384 as a deduction. So maximum deduction for the partnership firm is 3 lakh 84. Are you with me? And how much is the taxable profit for the partnership firm? Taxable profit for the partnership firm. 96,000. Are you all with me? Now, the question is not asking anything in relation to the partner. Imagine, they are asking you to compute the total income uh, of a partner. Say there is one partner, Mr. A. Imagine that the firm is telling you, not firm, 
so the question ICI is telling you to compute the total income of that particular partner. Then what would have been the total income of that partner? Compute and tell me. Imagine there is Mr. A who is a partner. There are two partners, Mr. A and Mr. B. Equal partners. You need to compute the total income of Mr. Taxable total income of Mr. A. Compute the taxable total income of Mr. A. Both are equal partners. Both are equal partners and compute the taxable income of partner A and the exempted income also. Compute the taxable as well as exempted income. Equal partner, equal profit sharing ratio, equal investment, everything equal. Hmm. 75 is the actual amount paid. That is not allowed as deduction. Why should we add back? Because that net profit is before adjusting the following items. Put it there. Okay, let's understand. Listen. Shh. So, according to the improvisation, keep quiet and listen. According to the improvisation, how many partners are there? Two partners. So, listen. This partnership firm have paid actually 75,000 rupees as interest on capital. Are you with me? Are you with me? This interest is to Mr. A as well as to Mr. B. So how much amount Mr. A will get? Out of the 75,000, how much amount Mr. A will get? 75,000 divided by 2. 37,500. Mr. A will get 37,500. Are you with me? In the hands of partnership firm, only 60,000 is deductible. Yes or no? In the hands of partnership firm, only 60,000 is deductible. So how much is the deduction for one partner? 30,000 is the proportionate deduction. One partner 30, other partner 30. Yes or no? So out of this 37,500, only 30,000 shall be taxable in the hands of Mr. A under section 28. The remaining 7,500 will be treated as what? Share of profit. Under section 10 to A and which that is fully exempted. So out of interest only 30,000 will be taxable in the hands of Mr. A. Are you with me? And how about remuneration? How about remuneration? The partnership firm has paid 4,80,000 as total remuneration. Yes or no? And how, how much will be Mr. A is getting? 4,80,000 divided by 2. So it will be 2,40,000. Mr. A will get how much? 2,40,000. And how much is allowable deduction? 384. And how much is half of 384? 384 is both. I told you that there are two partners. Everything is equal. Do you remember? So based on that assumption only we are solving this answer. Okay, there are two partners and everything is equal. So out of 384, how much will be the uh, amount of partner A? 1 lakh? 1 lakh 92,000. And how much is the actual amount received? 2 lakh 40. And how much will be? This 192 will be taxable under 28. Why? Because Firm got that 192 into 2 as a deduction. So how much is the remaining? And the 48,000 shall be exempted under section 10 to A. Are you all with me? Are you all with me? I have sold it twice. One as an example and another by improvising this question. Yes. Which 96,000? Book profit is 490. 384. 96. Who told me 196? I don't know. This is you guys only telling me the answer. Okay. I don't have a calculator, madam. I am only writing the answer that you are saying. I don't know who told me 96. 
Most of them told me 96 and I've written 96. If you told me 2 lakh 70, I'll write 2 lakh 70. Okay, yeah. What, should, what is the sum? 490 minus 384. What should be the taxable profit? 1 lakh 6,000. Who told me 96 then? This two deducted. Yar on the Kadavul. On the Kadavul yar. Put a mala potter the Kata. Yar dar. So it shall be one lakh six thousand. Okay. Make sure that you are doing the right math, okay? I don't have a calculator, okay? Don't tell me to keep a calculator aside. I am repeating again. This is not a revision for me. I have already completed this. It's the revision for you. Okay. Yeah. So I hope you understood what I have written over here. Is that clear? Online friends, I hope for you also it is clear. Yes. In this level, you have to expect an exam. Okay. They will mix it up like anything and they will try to confuse you in different manner. Yes. So moving on friends. Moving on. Moving on. Let's move on to the next thing. So we were discussing about 40B. Now we'll come back to 28. Now we'll come back to 28. So can you read this box again? Can you read this box again? Any interest, salary, bonus, commission or remuneration due to received by a partner of a firm. We can also say provided the partnership firm got a deduction under 40B. Yes or no? That amount that the partnership firm claimed as a deduction under 40B will be the taxable income in the hands of partner under section 28. Are you with me? Are you with me? Now, what is the second item taxable under section 28? If you are a businessman doing some business and you got some export incentives or similar receipts, received or receivable, that also will be taxable under section 28. What is export incentive? What do you mean by export incentive? You are exporting and the government is giving you some kind of grant. Okay, so if they are giving you some kind of grant, that is not your direct business profit. But still you have to tax it under section 20. Eight, because it is incidental to your business activity. So you have to tax it under section 28. Are you with me? Are you with me? Moving on to the third item. Can you read the third item? The value of any benefit or perquisite, whether convertible into money or not. That is in kind or cash. Value of perquisite or benefit. Perquisite will be taxable under, sec under the head salary, right? Then why we have written it under PGBP? Uh, if it is connected to your business or profession, you have to tax it under PGBP. I'll give you an example for a better understanding. Say for example, I'm a manufacturer. I'm a manufacturer and you are my uh, distributor. You are my distributor. I've given you an offer. If you're able to distribute uh, 10,000 bottles of water this month, if you're able to distribute 10,000 bottles of water this month, I'll get you a gold ring. I'll get you what? A gold ring worth say 40,000. If you distribute 20,000 of this kind of bottle, I will get you a gold ring worth 40,000. This was the offer. And say she achieved the target. She achieved that particular target. She's a distributor, okay? So I have given her a gold ring. That gold ring is on account of business because I have set a business target and she have achieved that particular business target and I have given her a gold ring. That is a benefit received for her in her business and that benefit shall be taxable for her under section 28. Are you with me? For the manufacturer, it's an expenditure. For the distributor, it is her income. Why? Because it is a benefit or perquisite received in relation to business, whether converted into money or not. Is that point clear? Is that point clear? Can you read the next item? Fair market value. FMB means fair market value on, on conversion of stock in trade to capital asset. Can you tell me what do you mean by conversion of stock in trade into capital asset? 
what do you mean by conversion of stock in trade into capital asset very simple say i am an ac trader i am an ac trader air conditioning okay i am i am i'm selling air conditioners say due to that hot weather in chennai i took one or two acs from my stock yard and i installed it in my office i took one or two acs and installed it in my office that is called as conversion of stock in trade into capital asset till yesterday it was my stock today i fixed it in my office and it will become my capital asset it will become my official plant and machinery are you with me are you with me when i am converting that capital asset into stock in trade what department say i am actually not getting anything i am not getting any income because i am not selling that particular stock are you with me but there is a problem what is the problem that item is not a stock anymore that item is not a stock anymore i have to remove it from the warehouse number 2 that item become my capital asset if that item become my capital asset then i should be given with depreciation yes or no yes or no so to solve two problems they have a single solution and what is the single solution do one thing whenever you convert that particular ac into capital asset whenever you convert that ac into what capital asset on the date of conversion you find out the fair market value of that particular ac on the date of conversion you find out what the fair market value of that particular ac the fair market value shall be a deemed income under section 28 it's not your actual income it's a notional income only what is notional income not real but department say consider it as your income we know it is not your real income but consider it as your income so it is considered as a notional income only and you have to tax that fair market value as an income under 28 are you with me are you with me and the same fair market value you can show as your actual cost of capital asset and you can claim depreciation afterwards on that same fmb you can claim depreciation from today onwards are you all with me is that point clear so whenever i'm converting my stock in trade into capital asset on the date of conversion whatever the fair market value i have to treat that fair market value as an income taxable under pgbp the same fair market value i can show as my actual cost of the plant and machinery and i can claim depreciation on that particular value is that point clear for everyone now next item under 28 what is the next item income from speculative transaction what is speculative transaction intraday trading is the best example for speculative transaction say for example i am doing some intraday trading i am doing what some intraday trading are you all with me i am doing some intraday trading say i've done it only once in my lifetime i've done it only once in my lifetime so if i've done it only once in my lifetime then people will say you have to put it under capital gain because there is no frequency of occurrence of the transaction i'm only done it only once in my lifetime yes or no but income tax department say it is not like that whether it is one time two time three time four time doesn't matter if you're doing a speculative transaction that have to be assessed under pgbp that too as a separate business you have to maintain are you with me are you with me say i'm a practicing chartered accountant okay i'll be having income from my profession and i have done one or two speculative transaction like i have done one or two intraday trading have you heard about intraday trading yes or no don't tell me to teach what is intraday trading okay that is another subject that means you are buying something in the morning and selling something that day itself that means a transaction that is happening between a day a transaction that is happening between a day is said to be what intraday trading are you all with me just a second
requesting meeting summary with ai companion what is this who wants this you want to bring ai in between yeah so friends listen what is basically speculative transaction that means you are buying something and you are selling something in between a day that is called as what speculative intraday transaction all the intraday transactions have to be treated as speculative transaction are you with me i'll make you write some exceptions over here so whenever there is a question in relation to this speculative transaction always you should know this please write this to your uh, uh, revision note trading in intraday trading intraday trading in intraday speculative speculative transaction if you are dealing with intraday trading or if you are doing some intraday trading that will be treated as a speculative transaction and trading commodities derivative like currency gold crude etc not speculative treated as normal business if you are trading commodity derivatives like currency gold crude etc it is not speculative treated as normal business only then trading uh options and futures or ra rather we'll make it simple okay trading um derivatives you write simply derivatives derivatives again not speculative treated as normal business only so the point is in exam if they are saying intraday trading that is speculative they are saying commodity derivatives like gold crude etc silver etc that is normal business only you have to treat it as a business activity but normal business activity if they are saying derivatives like futures options etc i don't know whether you have heard about options futures etc if you have heard about options and futures otherwise you have to google and study okay because being revision class i cannot to teach you options and futures right now options and futures are normally called as derivative and what is derivative ah uh, an asset that derives its value from some underlyings is said to be what derivatives okay like options and futures i think you have to study this in your fm not fully but some part of it is there in your financial management afm it is there fully but in fm also somewhere the reference is coming okay yes so you write this intraday trading speculative commodity derivative non speculative trading derivative then normal business not speculative ah uh, yes actually in agricultural commodities you can do this we, we normally in malayalam we call it as avadhi vyaparam i don't know what you call it in tamil yes for agricultural commodity you can do that that is considered as speculative only but nowadays whether anybody is doing that i don't know but you can do that there is an option especially rubber a cardamom pepper yes cash crops what do you call, say that in tamil like uh, ah that thing okay whatever it is i didn't understand what you said that pana thing okay yes what is that pai pa come again pana oh cash crop ku tamil illa yeah yeah whatever it is so write this down are you all with me friends are you all listening have you written these three so listen so under pgpp the first thing that should know is section 28 can you please explain about derivatives no 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 alinivas no because we'll go out of topic if i start explaining about derivatives it is not at all direct tax so no example is options futures that you should 
uh, you should learn it in your final first of all okay so if i try to explain it we will lose at least one or two hours for that so i don't want that thing to happen because first i should know i should teach you what is uh, equities then based on equity how this trading happens then how you are deriving value and what is right uh, what do you say option writing and what is option selling on what is for market for spot market and what is future market and what is this arbitrage everything i have to teach you so no ways i'm really sorry that is not first of all income tax so no yes so coming back to the point friends stick on to the syllabus that will be always better okay yeah then moving on friends section 28 is all about the income chargeable under pgpp so let's revise the items coming under section 28 can you read the first item income arising to any person by way of profits and gains from business profession or vocation second one any interest salary bonus commission or remuneration due to or received by a partner of a firm third one export incentives or similar receipts received or receivable fourth one any benefit or perquisite whether convertible into money or not in kind or in cash fifth one fair market value on conversion of stock in trade to the capital asset and the last one income from speculative transactions to be treated as separate business that too intraday trading is considered as a speculative activity commodity derivatives and normal derivative trading is not considered as a speculative activity you have to treat it as your normal business that's it okay yes so moving on with the deductions we will complete one or two deductions and uh, i'll leave you after that okay because section 32 i have no plans to start today if we start section 32 we require some time because that is comparatively a lengthy section depreciation section 32 i should teach you 32 43 subsection 1 and um, section 50 three things together we will deal being evening that to it's it's somewhere near to 6 i'll complete 30 and 31 and then let you go okay so can you read the next heading section 30 deduction on rent rates repairs and insurance for building so hope you remember section 28 was the income 30 to 37 is 30 to 37 deductions and how about section uh, 40 series disallowances so we are about to start the deductions which is under section 30 to 37 so first deduction is deduction on rent rates repairs and insurance for building listen imagine say i own a building okay say this building is owned by me are you all with me this building is owned by me i am running a business in this building i am running a business say i am the owner of this academy i am the owner of this academy and i am running this particular academy in this particular building owned by me are you with me are you with me so this building is actually treated as a capital asset of my business so four related cost in relation to or four associated cost in relation to this building i can claim as a deduction under section 30 four types of cost which is incurred for this building is allowed as a deduction under section 30 which are the four items number 1 read read number 1 rent of building number 2 current repair not nature of capital expense number 3 rates and taxes number 4 insurance premium building used for either business or profession either as owner or tenant imagine i own this particular building i own this particular building if i'm the owner i don't have to pay rent if i'm the owner i don't have to pay rent but i have to incur current repair what is current repair revenue nature expenditures what is revenue nature expenditures those day to day expenditure to maintain this particular building is said to be what revenue nature expenditure are you with me are you with me say there was a problem with the lights i repaired it that is a revenue expenditure there is a problem with the camera i repaired it revenue expenditure there is a problem with the ceiling i repaired it revenue expenditure there is a problem with the window glass i repaired it revenue expenditure i expanded the class or extended the class extended means not the type i have expanded this class then what will happen that is a capital nature expenditure and you are not supposed to claim it as a deduction under section 
capitalizer expenditure have to be capitalized and you have to claim depreciation are you with me are you with me so the second point is current repair that's why i've written not in the nature of capital it should be in the nature of revenue day to day expenses i can definitely claim as a deduction under section 30 what is next rates and taxes you tell me if i am the owner of this building i should pay something to the municipality property taxes sewerage taxes etc will come that i can claim under pgpp you don't count it under house property why because i am not getting any rental income from this property are you with me i have a property and i'm using that property to run my business am i getting any rental income no if i'm getting rental income then it will be under house property i'm not getting any rental income i'm running my business then you have to conduct consider it under pgbp and all the expenses in relation to this building have to be deducted under pgbp is that point clear so rates and taxes means all the municipal taxes property taxes sewerage taxes whatever i pay to the local authority i can claim as a deduction under section 3030 i hope it is clear and what is next insurance premium say for example i have taken an insurance on this particular building i have taken what insurance on this particular building say earthquake insurance or uh, natural calamity insurance tsunami insurance something like that for that i have to pay what premium if i am paying premium that premium is again allowed as a deduction under section 30 are you all here are you all here four types of cost which are associated with the building allowed as a deduction which all are the four types of cost number 1 rent of building number 2 current repair in the nature of current repair not in the nature of capital number 3 rates and taxes number 4 insurance premium this building either owned by me or taken on rent if it is on rent the rental expenses current repair will come rates and taxes normally will not come because only the normally the owner is supposed to pay the rates and taxes am i clear yes, is that point clear for everyone yes sir and online friends please respond it should not increase the efficiency of the asset yes yes excellent so capital expenditure means capital expenditure means any expenditure that increases the volume capacity value life usage etc will be considered as capital expenditure expansion will increase the volume and value are you with me so it should be day to day expenditure yes very good now friends listen section 31 and friends deduction is from 30 to 37 hope you remember that that's the first thing that i've written deduction is from 30 to 37 but there is a speciality deductions from section 30 to 36 is specific what is specific example what exactly claimed as can be claimed as deduction is clearly mentioned from 30 to 36 but 37 is general what is general certain expenses which satisfy certain conditions mentioned under 37 is allowed as a deduction under 37 so when it comes to the deduction apart from the other heads pgpp has its peculiar nature 30 to 37 is the total deduction but out of that till 36 is specific 37 is general that means all the expenses which you are incurring in relation to your business other than items mentioned under 30 to 36 have to be adjusted under 37 that's what is called as general are you with me we will discuss 30 to 37 in a very detailed manner don't worry before that we should know what is 31 we have completed 30 the first specific item second specific item is 31 can you read the heading repairs and insurance of machinery plant and furniture say you are incurring any repairs as well as insurance for the machinery plant and furniture imagine i am using a particular machinery say for example ac ac is considered as a plant and machinery i am using it for my business i am the owner of this academy and i have installed ac in the classroom and this ac is what a plant and machinery two associated cost related to this ac i can claim as a deduction under 31 are you all here two associated cost that i am incurring in relation to this particular ac i can claim as a deduction which will are the two associated cost number 1 current repair all of a sudden this ac had some problem it turned off 
Are you with me? I've called a mechanic and he fixed it. I called a mechanic and he fixed it. That amount that I've required to pay to the mechanic as well as to the spare parts shop is allowed as a reduction under 31. Are you all here? Yeah. Second one, insurance expenses. Normally, nobody will take insurance for AC and all. But imagine I've taken an insurance. Say, for example, short circuit. Say, the possibility of short circuit is there in Chennai. Imagine. There are a lot of, lot of short circuits happening in Chennai. So, I thought of taking an insurance. And I'm paying a premium for this. And that premium is again allowed as a deduction under section 31. Are you all here? When you compare 30 and 31, normally rates and taxes, you are not required to pay any taxes to the municipality for installing an AC in your office. So, rate and taxes will not come. But you can take an AC on rent. That is possible. You can take an AC on rent. And the rent that you pay for the AC, you cannot claim it as a deduction under 31. You cannot. Why? 30 to 36 is what? Specific. Only those items mentioned under 30 to 36 is allowed as a deduction there. So what to do with the rental charges of plant and machinery? 37. Not from 30 to 36. You have to adjust it under section 37. Are you with me? Are you with me? All those items that are coming specifically mentioned under 30 to 36 is only allowed as a deduction under there. The other items which are related to your business have to be mandatorily claimed under 37. Are you all with me? Now there is a common note for this. Can you read this note? This is actually section 38. Can you call, read this common note? Building, plant and machinery, fur furniture as above are used partly for business and partly for other purposes. Only a proportionate part of expenses attributable to the part of purpose of business will be allowed as a deduction. What do you mean by this? Say this building, this floor, I am uh, running my business. And the ground floor, I am staying over there. I am staying over there. Are you with me? For the entire building, there is a repair. Insurance expenses I have incurred. 1 lakh rupees is the insurance premium that I paid. Are you with me? For the entire building, I took an insurance. And the total insurance amount was how much? 1 lakh rupees. So it has two floors. First floor, self-occupation. Second floor, business. So what to do with that 1 lakh insurance premium? Only 50,000 I can claim as a reduction under section 30. Not 31, 30 because building. It is building, so I can claim it as a reduction under 30. But only 50%. Why? If plant and machinery or building or a furniture that we have mentioned here, is not exclusively used for your business purpose. Only those proportionate expenses that is incurred for your business is allowed as a deduction under the respective sections. Are you with the common sense? Yes or no? Yes or no? So that's what they are saying under section 31. Is that clear till now? Is that point clear for everyone? Very good. So I will do one thing. Shall I take a small section, another section? But we don't have small sections now. Yeah, no, no. We'll do one thing. Let's 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 wind up today. Okay. Yesterday you you sit till six forty or six fifty, right? So that tomorrow I can extend a little bit also. This is a kind of a provision. Okay. Maybe tomorrow I'll be extending a little bit. No problem. So go relax and come back at eight thirty a.m. tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. Yesterday in the online somebody were complaining. Time up. Time up. Okay. Today, yeah. Now you can take a break. Not break, you can go. Doubt. Okay. Monica, ask me. What's your doubt? Employer is reimbursing tuition fees of 300 per month to the employer for pursuing MBA courses. Who enrolled himself? 
it's perk yes yes it's perk it's perk not uh, allowance if it is a reimbursement it should be perk how to compute uh? you only said it is 300 per month reimbursement sir in house property i raised the question but you forgot to answer what is that raise again fully taxable yes if that amount if that children is studying in a house owned by the not house sorry if the children is studying in a college owned by the employer then up to 1000 you can claim exemption in an outside college you have to tax it in full in case of vacancy in case of vacancy ga is equal to actual rent received or er whichever is lower no 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 that is not right in case of vacancy one second i am addressing one second one second in case of vacancy you can take yes as per this unit 1 uh, is vacant in this sum why don't we treat such unit uh like this that last question eight portion if you compute separately also you will get the same answer okay you compute separately also you will get the same answer office member to send the chart book pdf i think they have already sent they have already sent it somewhere today the students already got it so how can i ask them again and again like i think they have already sent them send it to you if i'm not wrong so it is better you directly call them okay because i've actually pressurized them today and i've told them to send it to you and actually they already sent it to you also fully one side try like that but i am not getting the answer maybe you have done some mistake uh, alinivas don't worry ah yeah yeah you can have it it is not clear if we take the print out it is not clear if we take print out uh, i didn't get you google hey kathambi va eat it go he was actually waiting for a long time come you were asking something earlier no who was that ah yo yo sorry sorry mari poi he you also have a specs you also have a specs why ha yes professional tax employer don't have to expenses yes 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 that paid for the employee yes 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 37 yes possible Imagine a situation where your uh, 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 your monthly rent is your monthly rent is ten thousand okay? in week twelve. Annual rent is one lakh twenty thousand. Now mm, your expected rent is say uh, one lakh ten thousand. So your expected rent is one lakh ten thousand. In this case, say there is a two month vacancy. Okay. Then your actual rent one of one lakh rupees. 
So here we can say your actual rent is less due to vacant homes. Okay. Understood. Instead of expected rent, say it is one lakh fifty thousand is expected rent. One lakh fifty thousand is expected rent. Okay. Instead of that, assume one lakh fifty thousand is expected rent, and the actual rent is one lakh twenty thousand. Your actual rent is anyways less. Okay. If it's a vacancy, also it is less. Okay. But in this such situation, you have to take expected rent of this as the CAR. So all your because your CAR is not less due to vacancy. It is anyways less. Okay. Okay. So the interpretation should be AR should come below ER due to vacancy. Okay. AR should come below ER. Okay. Which I said. Uh, okay. okay. So if I take into account the vacancy loss, then only it should. Then only it should come under ER. ER. Okay. Then only you can take that back value. Otherwise, not. Okay, sir. Otherwise, uh, I will take this AR itself. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Not AR, sir. ER. 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 Okay, sir.